Ableton Live is an incredible tool to add to your tech team's arsenal, especially if you're interested in automating and simplifying your church's presentation experience. Dan and I, we're gonna show you how. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so you know whenever we release a new video. In the past, we've talked about using programs like Playback from Multitracks and Prime from Loop Community to be able to control easy worship using MIDI. Now, we also know that a lot of you use Ableton Live with your worship tracks, so we wanted to walk through setting that up with you so you can see how simple it really is to add MIDI cues to Ableton to control easy worship. Ableton Live is a very robust program and it can do a ton of things. Now we're gonna focus on showing you how to add Easy Worship MIDI cues to Ableton and placing them in your tracks. Now before we start actually adding the MIDI cues to Ableton, there are a couple of utilities that need to be installed on the computer. Now if you're using two different computers, for instance, one on stage for Ableton and one in the AV booth for Easy Worship, you do need to make sure they're running on the same network. Yep. If you don't have remote enabled yet in Easy Worship, Click on Edit, then Options, and then Advanced, and check the box to enable remote control. You can rename the server here if you want, or leave it on the default name and click OK. If you're prompted to install Bonjour, go ahead and install it. We'll also leave a link in the description below with instructions for installing it. Now, once you have that installed in Easy Worship, click the Remote button on the toolbar. Make sure it says on in the bottom right corner. Then hover over MIDI and click the plus button in the bottom left corner to create a new MIDI control. Now when MIDI control window opens, click the link in the bottom left corner that says more information to download and install RTP MIDI. Now Easy Worship uses RTP MIDI for the network connection between Ableton and Easy Worship. Mm -hmm. A browser window will open with instructions and a link in the top right corner to download RTP MIDI. And once installation is complete, go ahead and launch it. In the top left, you'll see a box named My Sessions. Now you'll need two sessions for this to work properly. If you're using Ableton and Easy Worship on the same computer, you can create them together. Click the plus button at the bottom of that box to create a session. It should now show a session with your computer name. You can change the local name and bonjour name of this on the right. I'll name mine Ableton. Now, check the box next to it to enable that session. Click the plus button under My Sessions again to create a second session and name it Easy Worship on the right hand side. Then, check the box to enable it. With the Easy Worship session highlighted, you should see the Ableton session in the participants list on the right. If not, select Ableton in the directory in the lower left box and click Connect. You should now see it in the participants list on the right. Now, just a note here, if you're running Ableton and Easy Worship on two different computers, you just need to install Bonjour and RTP MIDI on both computers and create one session on each computer to make sure the sessions are connected and show in the participants list on the right. If you're running Ableton on a Mac, RTP MIDI is already installed. You can use Spotlight to search Audio MIDI Setup, and that will open the RTP MIDI window where you can create your Ableton session and connect it to the Easy Worship session on that same computer. Right. Now you can close out of RTP MIDI and go back to Easy Worship. In the MIDI control window, you can create a control name. I'm gonna call this one Ableton. Now, since we're using one computer here, I'll see both sessions in the input device dropdown. I'm gonna choose Easy Worship. If you wanna use a specific MIDI channel, select one here. Otherwise, leave it on any, and then go to the Input Cues tab. Now, we've made it super easy for you to export MIDI cues for Ableton. Simply click the Ableton Live Set Export button in the bottom right corner. In the window that opens, Choose your version of Ableton. If you have a newer version than what's shown here, it'll still work. Just choose whether you have light, intro, standard, or suite. Then under the pre-configured track MIDI output routing, select Easy Worship. Click the Choose Folder button and browse to where you want to save the exported file. Create a new folder and call it Easy Worship MIDI. 
then select that folder and click OK. Then click OK again and OK again on the MIDI control window. Click the remote button on the toolbar again and select MIDI. You should see your Ableton controller there and it should say not ready below it. On the right side, click the lock icon to unlock it and now it'll say ready. Open Ableton Live. The first thing you need to do is set the output so it'll connect with Easy Worship. If you don't already have a MIDI track, you can right click and select Insert MIDI Track. Click the output dropdown in your MIDI track and select Configure. Now make sure you have the track box next to Ableton checked. You can uncheck anything else that might be checked there, then close that window. Click the same dropdown button again and choose Ableton as your output. On the left side of the screen, click Add Folder under Places and browse to and select the Easy Worship MIDI folder where you exported the MIDI cues from Easy Worship, and click Select Folder. Now you'll see that folder listed under Places. Select it and expand the Easy Worship cues file by clicking the arrow next to it. We've only added the click and guide cue stems for a song, but when you add your song tracks, you'll obviously add all of the stems you need so you can hear the different tracks. So now I'm simply going to drag and drop the MIDI cues I want to the MIDI track. Now, for example, if this is the third item in my Easy Worship schedule, I can add a go to schedule item number three cue. So I'll expand the go to schedule folder under Easy Worship MIDI and drag schedule number three to the location I want on the MIDI track. I'm going to put it about where the intro to the song is. Now, this cue will select that item in Easy Worship, but now I need a cue to actually send it live. That'll be the Go to Presentation Start queue. Expand the Navigation folder and drag and drop the Presentation Start queue right after your Scheduled Number queue. Now these two queues together will select that Schedule item and then send it live to your screen. Now personally, I like to have a blank slide at the beginning of all my songs so that when it goes live during the intro, it just has the background showing. You can do this any way you want. It's all personal preference. Now that we're live to the song, you can expand the Go To Slide folder and start dragging and dropping your slide cues where you want them. Now my first guide cue after the intro is the verse. So if I look at my slides in Easy Worship, I can see that my verse 1 starts on slide 2. And it's broken into two slides. So I'll drag and drop the slide number 2 cue over the beginning of the verse and then the slide 3 cue to the middle of the verse and you can fine tune adjust that wherever it needs sure, to be. Sure, sure. Then you can right click in the track and change the grid size so it's smaller and then drag and drop your cue exactly where you want. Now any MIDI cues you need during the track, you can add them, including the logo, black, or clear cues. You'll see if we play this track, it'll go live to the correct item in the schedule and also advance the slides at the right timing. When you save this track in Ableton, it will save everything you've done, so now that it's set up, you won't have to do it again. What's really cool about this, Dan, is that you can automate an entire schedule, right? You, yes. could, you could go through an entire worship service and not have to press anything. In Easy Worship, that's correct. Awesome. If you want more information or training about what Ableton can do, we recommend checking out Will Doggett at FromStudioToStage.com. He's an Ableton Pro and has extensive videos on the ins and outs of it. We'll put a link to his page in the description below this video. Also, if you use Ableton or want to start using it and you need resources for worship tracks, you can purchase them from our friends at multitracks.com or there are some available for purchase at loopcommunity.com. That pretty much sums it all up. Now, Ableton may seem a bit daunting before you actually start using it, but believe us, it seriously makes a world of difference, especially if you're a smaller church with a smaller tech team. If you take the time to learn it, it's worth it. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click that notification bell so you get to see Dan's face every time we release a new one. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thanks for choosing Easy Worship.